Well, the Holy Gospel for this Sunday is found in Matthew, the 18th chapter. Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. Some translations say 70 times seven times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, the Lord ordered him to be sold together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him saying, have patience with me, I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me and I will pay you. But he refused. And then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, let's pray. O God, let the words of our mouths and the thoughts of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. You are our strength and you are the one who saves us. Amen. Well, I don't know if you have ever had this happen, but I bet you have, where you are uh, working your day, it's going okay, and all of a sudden you realize you've done something perhaps not so bright. And if you're like me, what you do in those moments is you talk to yourself. I talk to myself out loud. Oh, Glandy, that was so dumb. How could you be so dumb? How could you forget that? And sometimes if I remember things, and I do really well, I'll talk out loud to myself and say, Glenda, you're a rock star. That was amazing. Um, Do you talk to yourself? And I'll mutter about the drivers on the road. That person should never have gotten a license. Good grief, what are they doing in the fast lane? They're going slow. Um, We talk to ourselves. And sometimes our self-talk is really positive. We can say nice things, but I think more often our self-talk is self-critical, right? But the uh, psalmist David in today's uh, Old Testament lesson gives us an example of how we are to talk to ourselves. Because this whole psalm that we read this morning Um, When we read it responsively, it was rewritten at the halfway point to sound like a prayer to God, but actually the whole psalm in its writing in the Bible is directed to ourselves. King David starts out, Bless the Lord, O my soul. He's not saying, You guys, praise God. He's saying, Hey self. Bless God. Praise God. Remember God's attributes. Remember what God has done. That's a blessing. Bless the Lord, O my soul, he says, and all that is within me. Don't forget his holy name who forgives all your sins, who forgives all your sins, who heals all your diseases, sometimes here, sometimes there who redeems your life from the pit and who crowns you with mercy and loving kindness. If you say that to yourself, that's a pretty powerful kind of self-talk. It's remembering who God is 
and what God has done. So, I have a friend who has a church in North Minneapolis, and often this is how they start their worship. He'll stand up and say, God is good all the time. And the people will say back, all the time, God is good. Let's try that. God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. Now pretend you're these kids up here. God is good all the time. Amen. Doesn't that feel good? I mean, it gives you a certain kind of uh, power or excitement in yourself to remember how good God is. You know, we need to stop and take time to remember that because we tend to get caught up in our lives and we get busy. And some of us, many of us, like to be busy, like to have something to do, like to be moving around, like to be planning, and um, had a hard time retiring, Becky Beck. Um, no. <laughs> but right, a lot of us, many of us, um, love to stay busy. And even the ones of us who don't love to stay busy often find ourselves without very much free time. And so we forget we forget to talk to ourselves about who God is and how good God is. But God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. So, it's like I was in the swimming pool this summer with my great nieces and nephew. You knew they would come up somewhere in this sermon. And they kind of were picking at each other. They were a little crabby. And um, they, they were picking at each other, and the oldest one said, I don't like Lydia and Dominic. And she swam to the other side of the pool. And she was over there muttering to herself out loud, you know, about how much she didn't like her brother and sister. They had done something to make her mad, I don't know what. And I went over and I said, Maddie, why are you mad at Lydia and Dominic? I don't remember. Right? We need to stop and remember. We need to remember the great act of God. God gives us individual benefits, the ones I just told you. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, everything in me. Bless his holy name. He forgives our sins. He heals our diseases. He redeems our life from the pit. I think that almost everyone in this room knows what it's like to be in a pit. To be down so low, you can't imagine seeing daylight again. Whether it's an illness or a family member illness or a broken relationship, we know what it is to be in the pit. And we remind ourselves that the presence of God draws us up out of the pit. He crowns us with steadfast love and mercy. He satisfies us with good things as long as we live so that our youth is renewed like the eagles. I would love to have my youth renewed. <laughs> and then, those are all individual benefits, things God does for me that God does for you. But then there are things that it says God does for all of us. The Lord works vindication and justice for all who are oppressed. You know who God uses to do that work? You and me who are the beneficiaries of the gifts we've already listed. He made known his ways to Moses and to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding, abounding in steadfast love. I want to say something about that abounding in steadfast love. Rolf Jacobson, who wrote the newest major commentary on the Psalms, in writing about this Psalm, says that that concept of God's steadfast love is the whole point of the Psalm. That we are to hear as we are recounting to ourselves God's great acts for us and for other people. We are to hear that resounding steadfast love. Now, the word in Hebrew for steadfast love is chesed. And I love it so much that I tattooed it onto my wrist. Chesed means steadfast love. It means mercy. 
and loving kindness and faithfulness. It's a huge word. So it isn't just love, the love of God that we're recounting, but we're recounting to ourselves God's generosity and mercy, God's promised faithfulness, God's great gifts of forgiveness. And Rolf Jacobson said, when we understand that this is what this psalm is about, then we can stop worrying about God's words of judgment in this psalm that come a little later. And instead, we can recognize that we are to understand the chesed, the steadfast love and mercy of God. And when we understand that, we lose all our fear. And we gain a desire to draw closer to God because God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. You guys are smart. <laughs> so here's what I'd like you to do this week. I'd like you to talk to yourself. And you can talk to yourself in front of other people. You can talk to yourself walking down the halls like I do. You can sing to yourself, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Um, I, I wrote this week in my little blurb for, for our um, e-newsletter that this, that this text can kind of become an earworm for you. An earworm is a song that gets stuck in your head and you can't get, like, it's a small world after all. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> But you can replace it with, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. I want you to say that to yourself this week. Whether you say it talking to the mirror, whether you say it when you're rolling over to get up in the morning or, or putting on your CPAP to go to sleep at night, I'd like you to say, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is in me. Bless God's holy name. God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. Amen.